Hey friends of Keycloak, nice to see you again. In this video, I want to talk about updating Keycloak and answering some questions I'm frequently asked, like, um, should I really update Keycloak to every version and why? And I'm on a really old version of Keycloak. How, how can I do the migration? What about the data migration? And so on. So make yourself comfortable, grab a coffee and let's start. So let's start with the first question. Should I or do I really have to update Keycloak with every major version? And why? Long story short, yes, you should. Why? Keycloak is an open source software. It's developed in an open source model and it's publicly available and you don't pay anything for using it, but you're allowed to using it. But as soon as a new major version um, is released, there are no more, no more updates or patches for the past major versions. So currently, as of today, we have the major version 21 and um, current releases, current updates and patches will be released for Keycloak 21. There are no more patches released for Keycloak 20 or Keycloak 19. So if you stay on an old version, um, yeah, possibly you will stick on um, old uh, bugs and uh, some some attack vectors which are publicly known. And uh, yeah, that's a security risk. So um, you really should update with every new uh, major version to the most recent version. Um, best uh, also to every patch version, every minor version. And um, yeah, as soon as they are released, you should test them, test them with your um, extensions, if you have any, and uh, do some, some adjustments to the configuration. Um, it's all described in the release notes. And um, after successful testing all this, you should do the update on your production environment so that you uh, always uh, run the most recent and most up-to-date and hopefully most secure version of Keycloak. Next question. I'm running on a very old version of Keycloak and how can I migrate to the most recent version? Do I have to use some intermediate versions? Do I have to uh, migrate every major version of Keycloak or can I migrate a one-step solution from the old version to the most recent version? Well, let's log into my example, which I brought uh, for you. So I have an environment, a legacy environment, where I'm running a Keycloak, uh, Keycloak server on version 8, and I want to migrate it to the most recent version 21.1 as of today. So my environment has a, a Postgres database, and uh, in this database, we're storing the data. And uh, actually, we have um, the Keycloak container, which is um, the version 800. Uh, we're running it in standalone mode um, without any um, clustering uh, for my, uh, this example and have configured the database environment variables for this legacy uh, um, container image. No more uh, things else are, is uh, configured. Uh, we don't need anything else for this uh, small demo, just um, a plain Keycloak environment. Of course, um, it may be uh, possible that in your environment you have uh, custom extensions and uh, for migrating the custom extensions you have to adjust the code accordingly. But uh, for our example we don't have uh, any um, extensions. So uh, I already started um, the um, legacy Keycloak server which is still based on the Wildfly and um, we can access it here. It's um, completely new server. I'm uh, authenticating to the master realm as an administrator. And you can see there's no other realm, uh, the master realm, and we have the server info, and you can see it's on version eight. And we want to migrate this environment to the most recent world. So we are in, in um, uh, 
uh, in Realm to get an idea that also um, the, the custom data we are creating is uh, migrated. And we're creating a user. We have um, a user as Nico, an email address, first name, last name, and uh, it's saved. We have the credentials to be able to authenticate, setting the password. And finally, um, we are trying to authenticate to the account application. And um, this works. What you see is um, the old account application, which was um, the actual one in uh, version 8. And we can sign in and we can sign out again and um, everything works. Now let's um, try to stop Keycloak and um, migrate directly to version 21. Um, go to the console, we're stopping Keycloak and um, have a look into the uh, configuration of the most recent version. Uh, we have the same database configured nothing changed and now we're running uh, the key cloak in version 21.1 um, as you hopefully know the, com the, the um, base architecture has changed from the wildfly server to the quarkus application framework and also um, the complete configuration has changed we're starting the server in development mode which is easier for local testing and local uh, development and we have the environment variables for the database uh, which are um, different, uh, differently named. And um, yeah, that's um, the whole thing you have to do. You have to change um, your configuration and uh, depending on your environment, perhaps you have um, some more configuration to change. If we now um, start our um, uh, environment with uh, the most recent version, with the 21 version, um just emptying um, the console docker compose up and um, the server starts and um, the migration of the database has been done uh, in the background transparently we don't um, see this and uh, yeah everything works fine server is started if we go to uh, the uh, browser and hit local host 8080 um have a redirection in here and i don't want this redirection to happen that's the old behavior um can I somehow disable the cache yeah that's what i want to do and um, now i have um, the welcome page we have um, the login form and we can authenticate and we're running the same system the same database with uh, version 21.1 the most recent version and um, our demo realm is still here our user is still here and we can still authenticate to our um, account application with our existing user and the existing password and um, yeah, basically we are authenticated. No migration of data um, has been done. All this um, has been done by Keycloak uh, transparently in the background. The database was migrated from version 8 to version 21. And also the, uh, the data was migrated. So as you have seen, this was um, pretty easy to just to stop the old environment, starting a new environment, and migration was done automatically and pretty fast. Yeah, that's because we have no much uh, data in our environment. Depending on your environment, if you have um, more data, more realms, more users, more clients in your um, environment, it, make it takes some more time to migrate um, the existing data. And uh, yeah, depending on the amount of data and which data has to be um, modified by Keycloak during the startup, 
uh, it may be useful to use some intermediate uh, versions because not every um, change is done directly on the database with an SQL statement, but also there are some um, Java um, um, processes, um, some uh, Java jobs running during a migration to migrate the data. And this might lead into uh, yeah, longer uh, runs and it um, might yield into some timeout to the database, which uh, should not happen. But um, yeah, you can um, test it with some intermediate versions. If um, the Big Bang from like in my environment from version 8 to version 21 uh, does not work and you're running in a timeout after five minutes, I think five minutes is the, is the default timeout. And um, so perhaps um, migrating the data from 8 to 12, from 12 to 15, 15 to 19, 19 21 or wh whatever, you just have to test it. And of course, for this procedure to test all the things, you, you really should do a backup of your database. Um, uh, that's always uh, necessary to have a, a, a running backup of your, of your database so that even if uh, you have tested everything properly, um, you are able to um, do some restore uh, for your production environment if something uh, fails. And um, yeah, there are some other settings um, which you might um, uh, test and might try out to have a longer time out for, for the database. And I put this together in a, in a GIST and I put the link of this GIST in the, in the video description, of course. Uh, and you have some... Um, timeouts to uh, to increase uh, for the IUNA uh, timeout for the transaction manager. Um, this is uh, the Quarkus transaction manager default transaction timeout. Um, I think this is currently five minutes and you can um, extend it to um, um, a longer period. In this case, uh, 3600 seconds, which is an hour. And then you can enable um, uh, the batch migration, which um, um, yeah, does some migration in, in batches of updates and not um, committing if every update statement um, in a single um, commit phase. So this might um, speed up your migration and also um, you're possibly able to have to run um, your migration in, in a longer time if you have that much data which is needed to do um, the migration. So what about exporting importing the data? Exporting the data in your own leg old legacy system and starting a complete new environment and importing the data in your new environment. Well, that's not what exporting importing of data um, was developed for. Migration should really be done on the database level like um, seen before that you um, start the new version of, uh, of Keycloak on your existing database. Exporting importing uh, data was developed for quickly um, export some configuration and importing it in another system to yeah, kind of reproduce some behavior or uh, some, some kinds of that. It was never designed for having a data backup by exporting your complete Realm data. Additionally, um, in old versions, the export of data might be incomplete. So if you export the data and try to import it in your new, new environment, um, possibly some data is missing, some configuration is missing, and uh, this way you won't get it um, yeah, migrated to your new environment. So always use the database migration of Keycloak itself. Also, don't forget exporting the data through the admin API or through the admin UI. Um, is always incomplete. Users' data will never be exported and also secrets like client secrets and SMTP credentials uh, won't be um, exported in plain text. You'll all, uh, you only get the full export in plain text uh, when you export the data on the command line uh, on the server level. So now you have hopefully an idea how to migrate and update your Keycloak environment to the most recent version and why you should do this on a regular base. 
As always, if you like this video, give me some thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you didn't miss any of my future videos. And uh, yeah, put it in the comments, your experience of the migrations and hope to see you soon. Bye bye.